we had the story last couple of times. I mean, a couple of times we covered this story about the upcoming budget OnePlus device. I think people are really interested. I think people are hype. Hmm. Dare I say hype hmm. about a cheaper, a more affordable OnePlus phone. I, maybe just value phones in general. The idea of getting more for less. Who doesn't want more for less? Well... Well, I got a slogan for you there. Yeah. You work hard for your money. And we're going to treat you right. Where is that from again? Yeah, I got you there. I mean, it was a song. It was an actual song, but Zellers, Zellers used it. Yes. And now people, Canadians have the nostalgia right now. Remembering Zellers was like a Kmart type of store. She works hard for her money. It was, it was dun, based, dun, dun, it was a, it was a spoof on that song. So you better treat her right. I think it was a her. I don't remember. But Zellers, you work hard for your money, and we we will treat you right. In other words, we'll give you a good deal. Mm -hmm. So anyways, people want good deals, whether it's Zellers, whether it's some other retailer, or even if it's a smartphone. And OnePlus is going to oblige. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically certain at this point that we're going to see this next phone. And so we've been goofing on the naming, goofing a little bit, trying to figure out, is it going to be the OnePlus Z? Is it going to be the OnePlus 8 Lite? Or is it going to be the Nord by OnePlus? A.K.A., as you see in that thumbnail to that video. So here we are on Android Central. It appears that we can basically say it's going to have this Nord thing going on. Mm. They're going Nord. And there's a couple of reasons. Hear me out if you don't mind. First off, they start this account, this new social media account, and this post goes up with a, a kind of uh, a leak. <laughs> How is it a leak if it's on their thing? It's not a leak if it's on their Instagram account, but it's a preview, I should say, of a, an upcoming invitation to an event which will take place for this upcoming device. And the invitation, I mean, just straight up, you see the spelling, you see the word Nord on there. Blunder. Was it a blunder, though? It's saying Instagram blunder reveals the details. Was it a blunder? I don't know. Who knows with these leaks anymore, Will? Mm -hmm. What's a blunder if it gets people hype? Maybe it's not a blunder at all. Or maybe it's a... Uh, is there such a thing as a positive blunder? Or a, an opportunistic blunder? Anyway, this post goes out. You got Carl in it. You got the invite in front of him. And you have the Nord name on there. But that's not the only reason I know they're going to call it Nord. The other reason is because they're having a joke themselves in naming the Instagram account. Mm. And the one name that's not in their joke name Instagram account is Nord. Instead, they have all the other rumored ah. names inside of it. They have one plus light Z thing. So uh, right. you see what I mean? They didn't put the name that they would eventually choose. The only rumored name that didn't end up in the social media account, hype account, is Nord. So I feel fairly confident in saying that's what they're going to go with after seeing the hmm. invite along with, did they take down all the posts? Account is private. Is private. Interesting. It was not private last I looked at it. So now they want you to follow to see what's in there. Kind of, is that a smart move? Look at these, uh, the games that are going on here. Mm. Anyway, the other reason is because there's a post from Carl in which he says, uh, uh, with new beginnings, he's, he's talking about all the people at OnePlus, how they're going to, they're working on this new thing. And, he even references the fact that there's been many names for their next project. And in the many names that he mentions, he conveniently covers the light name and the Z name, but not the Nord name again. Hmm. So I'm fairly convinced it's going to be called the OnePlus Nord. It's going to be a mid-range device. So rumors had to price, like I said in the past, as low as 300. It's probably going to be more like 500. Quick recap on the specs, 765G Snapdragon chipset, 90 hertz AMOLED display, possibly AMOLED display, 30 watt fast charging, 48 megapixel main sensor. And of course it will be a, uh, uh, it will be a, 
an option for OnePlus fans that don't want to spend that premium price tag, that don't want that premium uh, 8, Pro, 8 Pro or 8 experience. Although, not not to say that there will be, not to say this experience will be poor, but it will just be uh, in line with a mid range device. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the value for money, as we know, it lives in the mid range. Mm-hmm. So the spec list there is probably pretty decent. Of course, I like the things that OnePlus does with the software, so there's some advantages there as well. And they're also going with this teal or turquoise color thing, so maybe that will play into the actual device also because they've used colors like that. They had a color like that, it looks like, for the OnePlus 8. Is that an 8 or an 8 Pro that came in that color? I can't remember, but they had, they've used colors like this in the past. I, I think you could actually get both. That's an 8 Pro in that picture, but you could get both of them. Uh, the OnePlus Nord is expected to be formally, formally unveiled on July 10th. Uh, I don't know where Android Central is getting that information, but that's their speculation at the moment. So you can go check out their Instagram page if you want to follow along. But exciting times for OnePlus fans that have been holding out for something a little closer to the original OnePlus DNA value for money proposition. Although some people feel like it should have still had the top tier Snapdragon in it Mm -hmm. and still been cheap. That's the real DNA. That's the real DNA. The flagship killer. Mm. That's what they used to call it. Back in those old days, what was that, 20 years ago? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Will, I have a solution to some of your apprehension around unlocking your car with your phone. Oh, yeah? The iPhone digital key that debuted at WWDC, they showed it off with that 2021 BMW, which is also uh, on your shopping list. I took a look at it before we started here. You have five hours to still unlock your car even after your phone dies. You like that? Hmm. How does that work? You like that? Yes, it's impressive. Very well. Yeah. It saves a little bit of reserve power knowing you might use it as a key. So there's a little tiny, just enough power, I guess, to transmit the necessary signal even after. Think of it as a a backup, a reserve tank Mm -hmm. on your car. You know, it hits the empty, but it's not really empty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever tested that before. Yeah, you tested that before, yeah. And it turns out there's there's some there's usually more gas there than you expect. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. Five hours, your phone can be dead, and you can still unlock your car. These digital keys becoming uh, more prevalent. You're seeing them. Obviously, the Tesla and, and others have implemented something like this, but this is the integration with the iPhone and a partnership with BMW, at least to start possibly other makers in the future it's going to be using nfc technology one thing you never have to worry about with traditional car keys is running low on battery should your iphone run out of a charge digital key functionality will still be available apple says a power reserve feature will allow it to open doors for up to five hours model depending even if the iphone itself won't turn on because of an insufficient charge so fully dead will not low battery on the phone the phone has fully shut itself down and reserve this little extra power to potentially unlock your car. So I know a lot of people were apprehensive when they saw the feature. Uh, great. My phone dies. I'm locked out. I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still valid, depending how long you're away from your car. It's still valid in the sense that you now lose your phone. You've lost everything. But this should give you a slightly better sense of security that, because the dead phone is something everybody deals with. Everybody's mm-hmm. seen it, mm-hmm. felt it before. It's a terrifying thing. Oh, yeah. The dead phone feeling. Where am I? What do I do? Where do I swipe? Where do I scroll? What planet am I on? What is my name? My date of birth. I know nothing. My phone is dead. My phone is dead. I know nothing. Right. No memory left. Yeah. Uh, uh, Everything. Just instant memory. We outsource all, every decision, outsourced, reference, the algorithms. What should I do? What should I eat? How should I think? How should I feel? I lost my phone. What am I? Very scary thought. What am I without my algorithms and my machines, Mm -hmm. my learning machines? Yeah. We were shooting with a spot robot today. Oh, yeah. That video is coming up so soon. I I mean, these people got to keep it locked. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look right in the camera lens. This camera lens right here. Public service announcement. I have not been like this in a video in a really long time. It's like a young Lou. It took me back. 
It's an aha moment. It's an inspector gadget. It's a child like Lou re recognizing that the future, that the old future still might happen. Mm. That the old future may still be today's future. Mm. Like I'm trying to say that we didn't, you feel uh, rejuvenated. I'm trying to say sometimes the future starts to look uh, like it's been altered in such a fashion that it can't it can't get back on track to its old progression. Things can stagnate or feel stagnated, mm -hmm. or certain events can take place. But I'm saying this one, and I know everybody everybody take the grim approach. What if Spot was evil? It's just a trendy thing to do. Mm -hmm. But you know me, Will. I sit there, I look at it, I see all the little motors. I, I recognize the complexity in the behavior. And I think humans are amazing. That's what I think. I, I, I understand the eventuality. I know where we're going, but I, th I think there's humans over there, Boston Dynamic. Mm -hmm. If we walk in there, it's not spot clicking away at the keys. Yeah. Still humans. And they've done, they've created something amazing. So just keep it locked for that video. I don't know if anybody's following what I'm saying here. Maybe that's the point of it. Mm. Maybe that's the purpose, but just don't miss that video. It's coming up soon. Anyway, for now, this digital key functionality is exclusive to this 2021 five series, but it's going to be part of a consortium or consortium. I don't know which one you prefer, but once you belong to a consortium, you're set for life. Is that, is that true? That's right. You never have to worry about another thing hmm. ever again because you have, you're inside of the consortium. So anyway, you don't have to worry about your, your thing dying. Oh, also, it's not just unlocking the car, to be clear. Uh, it's also running the car. So when you get inside the car after unlocking it, you place it on the wireless pad before hitting the push button start. Oh, I see. So it knows that it has the, the correct identity, the correct person. Not just getting into the car, but also starting the car. Mm -hmm. Here's a story out of China. We have our first uh, robo taxis. Mm -hmm. They are, or not our first, they're actually expanding their rollout of robo taxis. A robo taxi uh, is getting back to the topic of robots. It is what it sounds like it's a taxi without a driver. Mm -hmm. That's a robo taxi. Is that the name now? Like tissue or Kleenex? I'm pretty happy with robo taxi. It sounds, I like it. It's very Blade Runner. True. Uh, Robo Taxi, post apocalyptic. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it's too direct. Yeah, or, well, what would it be? A pod, transport pod? It, you either go, you notice the future, it either goes like Star Trek, everything's perfect, everybody gets along, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they still battle. <laughs> There's they, a lot of war. They still battle, but Star I'm saying Trek, just yeah. on the Enterprise, it felt very, uh, what would you say, uh, organized. Unifying. What's that? Unifying. Yeah, yeah, organized. Yeah. <laughs> organized and, and tight. Felt very tight. The outfits. Yes, very tight outfits. Just tight outfits and, and... Colorful. Just everything had a place. There's that future. And then there's, a, there's the Blade Runner, the, the messy future, the cyberpunk messy future. Uh, bits and bobs and bolt-ons. Yeah. Grunge. Modular trash in the corner. Yeah. Very grungy. Neon. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. A lot of rain. I fog. hate to say it as much as I love that particular future. It's probably the, the less likely of the two. When you and I were talking about Tesla design and the interior compared to the Taycan interior, buttons, knobs, and all this kind of stuff, that's, what's kind of, that's what kind of indicated to me. That's when we started to go down this path of, well, wait a minute, which one's more likely? Mm-hmm. Because so many futuristic things have trended more in a direction of minimalism. Right. Do you think that there's going to be like a demolition man kind of where there's like a really pristine feature and then a really Both. grungy one? Pretty much living underneath the pristine world. <laughs> like two. Two in one. That's the type of deal. I mean, sometimes I forget 
what it's like to have a, a guy like Willie Do sitting over there. Well, sometimes I forget what we've really got access to here as an audience. Well, I'm the first, I'm the, the first audience, but then the audience in the world, it gives the experience moments like that where uh, it's just a Willie Do breakthrough hmm. where I'm going left, I'm going right. And Willie Do just cuts through like a knife through butter. <laughs> just completely derail the conversation. No, not derail. I'm saying you hit the center point. You said, yeah, you said I mean, it's both. Yeah. It's it absolutely both. both. Yeah. It's not one or the other. It's both. It's uh, it's it, this this movement, this uh, uh, separation of uh, uh, people moving further apart from one another, different mm. groups and thoughts and ideas and distance mm -hmm. and walls and whether it's ideas exclusively or ideas that lead to actual physical barriers, mm. you can imagine. A, a continued divide in which these two futures uh, have obvious differences. These two uh, uh, sections of the future. Yeah. And many have, people have imagined it. Uh, I watched a movie, Elysium, is that a movie? Oh yeah. With, and I think uh, that's, what, that's what happens in that one. Yeah. You have the one part of town and you have the other part of town. And the green grass only grows in one spot. Yeah. It's like they're in space and then... Uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the rich people are in are I can't in space. even remember, but I'm just saying, man, I can see it. And mm. so, like a knife through butter, Willie Do comes through. And he makes the entire show worthwhile. And I hope, I mean, I gave him apl an applause. Now it's your turn in the audience. I want you inside of your premises, wherever you are, in your car, wherever you are right now, just give like a one-time clap. Willie Do will feel it through the universe <laughs> as if he was Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Uh, in Demolition Man. Anyway, Robo Taxis. Yes, it makes me a bit nervous. I've been to China. It's a bit cramped. It's, a, it's dense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just, you trip and fall and stumble into a 20 million person city. Mm. That's what happened to me. As you do. I was like, oh, did we leave that city? Oh, we're in the next city. How big is this one? 20 million. You trip and fall, you stumble into a 20 million person city. Vin will tell you. He goes there all the time. Yeah. Uh, so that made me a little bit nervous. It's, it's more work to be done, obviously, on the autonomous vehicle front. Vehicles are heavy. They're heavier than Spot the Robot. And so if they hit the old uh, flesh and the old bone, not looking good for the organic material. I'll tell you what. Mm. But so far, so good. The company has a fleet of 20 new robo taxis, which are based on Lincoln cars. Not going to complain on that. A little luxury for you in the back seat. Deployed from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day in a geo-fenced area that stretches 144 square kilometers. These will share 200 pickup and drop-off spots in the area. The fleet, now 40 robo-taxis, are used. And you access them through an app. It's called We Ride, And you just book your very own robo-taxi. You boot around, scoot around town, no driver necessary. Are you comfortable, Will? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. You're giving it a shot. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, listen, I'll tell you one thing. The ride service apps in China, it's a competitive marketplace. Mm. It's not just a single player. I'm reading about this. You got Didi. They raised 500 million US for their autonomous driving subsidiary. Uh, you got Pony.ai. Uh, you got AutoX. It's unbelievable. Uh, I don't obviously uh, in engage with any of these companies over here. Not, they're not over here, but... They don't have Uber over there, right? Eh? It's no Uber. No. Yeah, Uber bounced. I think they tried and they bailed. I can't remember. But it's, 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 there, there's a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And so the, the competition drives these companies to uh, innovate, obviously, and have a differentiating characteristic. So the robo-taxi is a way to get a leg up and say, well, we got the robo-taxi. Even though I'm sure... 40, 40 cars in their fleet is probably not much. Mm. They probably got way more cars than 40 with traditional drivers. But still, it gives you the, you can say, we got the robo tax. Yes. And I know that might be enough for me to sign up for the app. So you would do it? I would give it a shot. Yeah. Short trip first. Yes. See the behavior. Check it out. Make a little content. Mm. So anyway, if you're in China, go check out these robo taxis. Let me know how it goes. 
Uh, Acer has a new gaming chair, and normally this wouldn't be a newsmaker, but they've really, they've gone all out on this one. Now, some may remember, Will, once upon a time where we had a chair sitting right over there in the studio. Absolute madness gaming chair with monitors that attach directly to it and it reclines and it's got motors and it's a whole thing it was a whole vibe it was the ultimate thirty thousand dollar gaming pc would you look at that will what is it 13 million views couple of people watched it uh there were snacks there i think the majority of the video's success had to do with the snacks being present because everybody understands it but anyways this was an extreme version of a gaming chair, and then Acer went on to do their version of it. They did a Predator version of this type of chair, but of course, who can fit these things? Is it practical? I was playing Fortnite back then, those old days, man. Check the beard, the beard had fewer white hairs in it. I was chilling a little bit more, I probably played a few more video games back at that moment. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? Anyway, they try to come with something that's still extreme now, but in a different way that you can actually integrate into your life without completely rearranging your house, removing all the furniture, or potentially just moving into your garage to fit this thing. So this chair, the Acer Predator Gaming Chair X, awesome, O-S-I-M, is a typical gaming chair, not too uh, different from the one you're sitting in, Will, except... This one has real massage functionality in it. Mm. I'm talking almost like a mini massage chair with the with the arms that come and push into your back, not just the vibration you would see in a chair like that. Mm. Now, not just a little bit of heat and a little buzz, which it doesn't do very much for you, but a push. It's pushing in there while you're gaming. Oh, right. well, that's uh, that's amazing. That's what you're looking for. Oh yeah. Well, maybe Acer will switch your chair right now, and you're getting a massage running the show. I, I don't know if that's a good idea. You're, I might fall asleep. You're going to snooze right on the microphone. <laughs> right there. So it has that. It also has speakers in it for a more immersive experience. It's going to cost a couple of dollars, as you might imagine. I don't know if they listed the price over here. The awesome part is actually it's a massage company, O-S-I-M, named after Mr. Ron Sim. And it's been around since the 80s. So it is a collaboration. They uh, know what they're doing. In the massage department, the thing can recline, and it's got the Bluetooth speakers built into the headrest. Now, if you click over, Will, to the next tab, you will see a video of those aforementioned massage components just pumping away there, waiting for your back to sit in the chair. And because let, let's be honest, you're gaming, it's very stressful. And you're trying to get those wins in Warzone or whatever you're doing. And you need to stay relaxed in the tense moments. Oh, it's pulsating. It's it's doing it all. And, and reclining as well. Mm. So maybe they're going to send this one for you. I feel like you'd be the right candidate. Not only did Acer recently introduce that chair, they also introduced their very own energy drink. <laughs> What do you think about that, Will? You ready for your Acer energy drink? Oh, yeah. It is called Predator Shot. Very appropriate. Crack into a can of Predator Shot. Uh, it's full of vitamins and minerals. Mm. <laughs> is that all they claim? Yeah, that's all it is. That's all they say. It's the best thing you could ever drink. But this is a, the gamer culture is, is, uh, continues to expand develop and become something we never imagined it could become the gamer culture it's chairs and energy drinks and streaming stuff and all the elgato stuff is still out of stock everyone's a streamer the guy you mentioned jim's review room he's a, he's a streamer now he's a streamer yeah i i, che I checked it out i watched his video his uh, goodbye video i'm done i'm just i play i'm playing the video games i'm telling stories he's playing last of us i saw he had i went to click on the twitch thing he had a five-hour-long mm -hmm. Last of Us. Yeah. Five and a half. I'm telling you. It five and a half games. hours playing Last I don't... Can you imagine what you get a break? You go to the bathroom and... Wow. Anyway, that's what he wants to do. That's what that's what he became... Everyone's becoming streamers right now. It's the hottest. You can ask Kirk. When he was on quarantine, he was going to be a streamer. Yep. Everyone's going to be a streamer. Mm -hmm. And so, good luck to everybody. But I don't know how many streams we can all watch. I don't know. But here's a here. This is coming from a YouTube channel. So who saw all that coming? Yeah. Maybe 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 everybody should have a stream. 
going, playing video games, having a time. Why not? But speaking of the gaming thing, how about Gucci um, doing their very first esports collab? You didn't see this coming. Mm -mm. That, my friends, is a $1,600 Gucci X Fanatic dive watch. And you might think, hey, if you, if you team up with a gaming organization, maybe you would do some sort of uh, Android Wear digital type of thing. Na, 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 na. You go straight luxury. Like because it's part of the, the, uh, part of the flex? I don't know. Is that the right way to say that? Yeah. Isn't Gucci making like t-shirts for teenagers? Like, like what I'm, towards teens? Well, the gamer has become the aspirational thing, much like I was talking about earlier with the streaming. It's the it's well, one of the aspirations. YouTuber is the same. People will say, uh, you know, kids will run up, kids will say, How do I I'm gonna be a YouTuber too, or whatever. And so it's, it's kind of it's similar. And so if it's the aspirational thing, well, so is a $1,600 watch, a luxury watch. That's an aspirational good. So your favorite gamer is, is wearing the thing, the collab, and you mm -hmm. want it too. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, if you're a kid and your favorite gamer is wearing it, you've you got to find $1,620. Mm. So I don't know what type of part-time job you got, but I hope it pays well if you got to get this to belong to the club. Now, granted, why am I saying kids? Is that I don't mean that. I, obviously, there's all kinds of gaming fans, including rich adults yes. that can easily buy a Gucci X Fanatic watch. Well, it seems like there's only a hundred units. Only a hundred units, limited run. It's got to be these type of collabs, you know. There's a very intense video down there. Mm. Very intense video. The clock, the clock is running out. They walk up to the game uh, stations. The clock is running out as it would be in the competitive moments of a game. He takes it off, though. He takes it off so he can watch it while he's playing without looking at his wrist. Maybe? It's like he keeps track of... I don't know, Will. Oh. Come on, Will. Stop poking holes in their commercial. Anyway, I, I don't know. It looks like a pretty cool design. I'm, I'm happy for them. What are you supposed to do? If you're Gucci, what are you supposed to do? You got to find some new customers. If you're Fnatic, what are you supposed to do? You got to find some sponsors and some deals. So I get it. It's it's cool. It's fine. And and orange and black. I got no problem with orange and black, mm -hmm. which is what they got going on. And actually, this is not the first collab. Oh, by the way, did you know Gucci's signature is GG? Oh. Can you yeah, please uh, tell the people out there in the world what GG stands for? Because I have no idea. I'm 74. You do. I'm 74 years old. Um, I think I heard it from StarCraft like a long time ago. It means good game. It means good game, yeah. It, yes. <laughs> Kirk was very angry right there. He was okay. staring you down. Holy. It's not just StarCraft. It's everywhere. Everybody uses good game, GG. Uh, uh, the other day, uh, uh, Will was playing um, Command & Conquer at home. The Command and Conquer uh, re-release, not this Will, Little Will, and and he was just getting dominated on the online play. I don't know these guys with actions per minute. I don't know what's going on, but he got a couple of GGs on there in the chat. Okay, couple that's of G positive. That's couple positive. of GGs. So it's it's kind of a nice part of the culture, I think. Yeah, an encouraging part of the culture. We have water resistance to a depth of six hundred and sixty feet and a super luminova which means that you can read the time during late night League of Legends or siege sessions. There's also a rubber strap, so it's useful underwater and for daily wear. I like that. I like a durable strap. Well, you know that. And Gucci's not the first one to attempt this. Apparently, they're catching up to Louis Vuitton, who uh, they, they've, they're going after esports fashion as well. How about that, Will? Esports fashion. Mm. You didn't think it was coming, but I'm telling you, it's coming. It's here, and it's coming. Hmm. Chuck E. Cheese filed for bankruptcy, and uh, I mentioned this to you before I put it on the show, and you shed you shed at least you shed you shed a couple of tears. Yeah, I mean, I was there maybe a couple months ago for my nephew's birthday. Unbelievable, yeah. and the the memories, 
and the mouse or the rat, whatever he is, hmm. and the other heads bouncing around, and the live the live show with hmm. the what are they robots? What are those things? puppets? Animatronics. Animatronics, which to me as a kid, what more do I need? Pizza, animatronics. Uh, co- uh, COVID not it hasn't been very nice to yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Well, it hasn't been nice. Who's it been nice to? Maybe itself, and that's about it. Yeah, itself. Everybody else suffers. Uh, and no one's going to Chuck E. Cheese. They got to re- uh, redo everything. They are still open. They, this, for the record, they're not shutting down completely. Bankruptcy allows you to reformulate your plans, move some resources around, uh, pull some strings, if you will. So they're not completely done yet. They're probably going to need some more cash. And they're probably going to need this this uh, lockdown to wind down a little bit. Hopefully, people get back inside the Chuck E. Cheese. But as much as I have the nostalgic feelings with the Chuck E. Cheese, I can't. I also can't help but look at it and think about the Shane Dawson thing. Mm. Which maybe if he's so. maybe he it was his video was the downfall. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a conspiracy on the conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started. He was saying that they were recycling. He wasn't saying that. It was just, isn't this weird that the pizza slices are all different shapes kind of thing? Now, for the record, before that video took off, I never had that experience of the different shaped pizza slices. Um, did you? You were there two months ago. Was Did your pizza have this, the oddly shaped slices? No. I no. I don't think so. No, it was just a regular round yeah. pizza. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, they responded and said, Chuck E. Cheese responded said, our pizzas are fresh. They've never been fresher. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> they're f- don't do that. F- freshly uh, baked every single time they're ordered. But you can go watch. You, I mean, you don't even need to watch the whole video. You can look at the conspiracies. They, the conspiracy is that they recycle pizza and that's, that people haven't eaten. When they take the tray back, they throw it under the, they heat it back up and send it back. I had a hard time believing it because it seems dangerous, right? Mm-hmm. Bacteria, how long was it sitting out? Yeah. Can you really just reheat it? So there's probably some other explanations, even if you have experienced the different shaped slices. Like maybe they make huge pizzas and then, I don't know, maybe there's some other. It's, it's Am I defending Chuck E. Cheese right now? It's just not a good look, the whole thing. The whole thing is not a good look, according to Will. Well, that's fair. Anyway, I don't. I'm with you. I don't think that's the reason. I don't. You know what it is, Will. I just kind of like the proposition of Chuck E. Cheese. Fun times are had. Pizza is had. Yeah. Uh, uh, games are played. Yeah. Tokens, tickets, tickets are t- tokens are spent and tickets are won. There's something so friendly about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But it is. It does sort of feel like a time gone by. But you, you go to a Chuck E. Cheese even when they re- reopen and it's a bunch of kids playing games on their phone. Like everything else. Yeah. Everywhere you go, everything you do, somehow the phone infiltrates and has to ruin it. But I'll tell you what, pre-phone Lou, pre-video game Lou, little Lou inside of a Chuck E. Cheese, good enough, ladies and gentlemen. What a time. And did you go to Palladium? Of course I went to Palladium. Okay. I actually got a Palladium story, real quick Palladium story. Okay. I met Steph Curry at Palladium oh, when yeah. he was uh, just a kid. So... Well, actually, I met Steph Curry and Seth Curry. They have no idea. They wouldn't know this because I was nobody. Still am nobody. Mm. At least compared to Steph Curry. Mm. <laughs> I was at the one on Young Street, the, the the Palladium on Young Street, not the Mississauga one. You don't even remember when it was on Young Street, do you? Downtown no. Palladium. No. Am I crazy? Was there a Palladium on Young Street? Can anyone back me up on this? Young Street in the city? Hold on a <laughs> second. A well, maybe there. I was in Mississauga. Hold on a second. Well, they had a go kart. Hang on. Hang on a second, Will. Okay, well. Palladium. How do I even find this out? Remember Palladium in Toronto? Yes. Oh. Just north of the Eaton Center, a huge arcade store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe I'm not crazy. I don't know. Anyway, they had to. The, I, I'm inside of this place, Will. I got my tokens. I'm doing my thing. I'm 12 years old. I don't remember. And all of a sudden, I see Del Curry, mm. who is Steph Curry's dad and at the time played on Toronto Raptors. Hmm. 
And, and I say to my friend, we're Raptors fans, I say, that's Del Curry. We should walk over and say hi. And of course, it's not—it's before selfies and everything else. You just say hi. That's all you do. I got no evidence of this uh, exchange. Yeah, I, he was a great three-point shooter himself, Steph's dad. And so we say hi to to, uh, to Del Curry, but he's with his kids, and he says, "Oh, say hi to my kids too. They're around the same age as you." Mm. And so, of course, it's just kids. You don't think anything of it, but it's Steph and it's Seth mm. because he was playing in Toronto at the time. So way back then, in the Palladium. Uh, I met. I, that's you know. That's the story. I'm sticking to it. I know you're. I see you. You're skeptical right now. I promise mm-hmm. you. You can ask. Uh, uh, you can ask my old pal Jason Spears about that. Is he real too? He's all. I just invented him as well. No, I haven't seen him in a while. But he. I believe he was with me. I believe at that moment he was okay. with me. What a crazy, weird memory that is. It's weird how certain things stand out to you. Yeah. But that was odd for me at that time to meet an NBA player. And then it's 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 equally weird that his kids go on to be NBA players, and one of them, one of the best NBA players. Mm-hmm. So, wild times. Anyways, 2020, forward from here, the future is back. That's my statement after today's episode. The future is back, Willie Do. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I'm happy to see it.